Over the winter, I've rested my vegetable garden. Now you'll know that I produce a lot of edibles from this space. These garden beds were made up using compost made from the green rubbish bins, of which about 80% is compostable. Now, this highlights a really serious problem. If we don't compost properly, you see, the rubbish bins that we have at home, that green bin, well, that's the source of this material. In fact, with a little bit of green waste composted, it's absolutely fabulous. But when you get contaminants like glass in there, that's because people are not throwing their glass bottles in the yellow bin, they're actually throwing it into the green bin. It's not ideal. And under normal circumstances, this compost couldn't be used in a home garden environment. It would be sent to landfill, which completely defeats the purpose of composting. From my point of view, I wanted to test and see how nutritious and how good this soil is. And I've got to tell you, it's fantastic. Now's the time to be getting seedlings into this. It's exactly what I'm going to do. My goal today is to get the garden ready for planting up. This spring, these sunny beds will be home to tomatoes and onions and basil groves, reflecting my family's use of these in summer salads. Now, the first thing that I've done and that you should be doing at home is cultivating the soil. So I've really turned this soil over. It's nice and loose and friable. But the next bit's vitally important. These raised garden beds are incredibly productive. And what I've done is I've constantly harvested from them and improved the soil after harvesting. Now, I've used slow and controlled release fertilizers during the growing season, but when it comes to enriching this soil, which has had a bit of time to rest, this is what I use to get the very best results. Now, this is blood and bone. It's an old trick that many people have used. What we would do is we would take this we'd be putting around about 150 grams per square metre over the garden bed. That's around about three to four handfuls per square metre. But if you really want to get the best results, what you've got to do is spread this out and then cultivate it in. Watering the topsoil in after applying is vitally important. Letting it sit for a few days and rest. The seedlings are going to sit here for that time too. It's important to remember that they were grown in nurseries. They tend to be a bit soft, so hardening them up in the environment that will be their new home for their life for a week or so before planting is a really good idea. Now, the last job is, of course, to water in. Whenever you plant anything, give it a good water in afterwards. Now, this bed is going to be amazingly productive. We'll get over 100 kilos of tomatoes, probably about 30 to 50 kilos of onions and an endless supply of basil right through the summer months from this three by one metre bed. This is the way to go and now's the time to be doing it. Everyone loves a good rhubarb and apple pie. And when it comes to harvesting rhubarb, look for stems that are about one and a half to two and a half centimetres thick with a really nice rich red colour to them. And then just grab your thumb, put it down the base of the plant and pull and twist at the same time. So it easily comes away. Now for more great gardening advice, join us after the break.